she's been gone for 20 years. But still, she's the greatest gospel singer of them all. And now, in a special TV treasury, here's my Jackson singing gospel as long as Did you put, can. take the play out? You're rolling, right? Hey? Yeah. Did you take the play out in there? Singing hard. Out as well. Singing yeah. Yeah, I so. Hand clapping my Mm -hmm. I'm Sly Dunbar of Sly and Robbie. I'm Robbie Shakespeare, the other half. Alright, come again. Stop it <laughs> you know, you're so sure. Well, well, we're not, we're not you sure? Alright, well, everybody fire. Yeah. Uh, and action. Yeah, I'm not sure if I'm Sly Dunbar, but I think I am Sly Dunbar from Sly and Robbie. I might be Robbie Shakespeare. Alright, rolling. You know it, Steve. Yeah. So, Sly, how did you first come towards music? Well, as far as I can remember, like, uh, like growing up as a kid, I always could remember a lot of the songs and it songs like the Shirley stuff and old Ska and Blue Beat stuff. And going during going to school, I always play like on the desk with my school friends, and we just sing, play like all these old songs, like the Scatterlight stuff, the old R and B stuff from America. And like when I got fifth, I told my didn't want to go back to school. I said I want to play music, and I said okay. So I started playing on stuff at home, Lloyd Parks and myself mm -hmm. with Ranchi. And Ranchi used to play at student one. So when he goes to student one, he would come back and say, this is how they're playing. And bring back some of these records. So we list all these groups and stuff. Then start playing in this band called Yard Rooms. And then Ansel was playing in RH Invisible at that time. So I think the drummer had left. The drummer was a guy called Tin Leg, very, very good drummer. And then I took over and Ansel said, I like how Hans told me he liked how I play. So Hans is a drummer himself, so Hans used to show me how to play for the fire dancer and stuff like that. So he was he, he had booked on Federal Studio to do a recording, so he said he wanted me to play in it. So the first song was like on uh, Night Doctor and then after Night Doctor they came out, he came to me, you know, we become good friends and he had this idea for double barrel. And you know he was playing with his mouth and dong ding dong ding ding ding, and then I started doo -boo -doo -boo -doo -boo -doo. So we rehearsed the song like for over a week. We went to cut it like one night at twelve o'clock at Dynamic Sound Studio, and I think the musician who played in that record was Light Parks, Bobby Aiken. Uh, I don't remember the bass player name, and myself, Ansel Collins. Yeah, Light Parks was playing that bass. But rhythm guitar. And we cut it the night, and you know, when we finished cutting the song, bus had stopped running, because bus used to stop running at 10 o'clock, 11 o'clock in Jamaica, so we had to walk home. So when we were walking, I said, It's a million selling, and everybody started laughing, and I kept laughing at it. I said, What am I saying? And I said, All right. Going back in the morning, he was going to use the organ to play the melody. I said, No, 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 use the piano, because then it's going to sound like Jackamito, and everybody going to think it's Jackamito, because at that time, Jackamito was the only one who was playing a like, piano instrumental so we did the, the, the piano playing the lead and use the organ for the rundown so we had it on a dub play for like over a year and a half walking around in Waterhouse playing it on top of set all the sound system in, in Waterhouse and one Saturday morning I was sleeping and I woke up and I was there solid go solid go and I said and oh, I said what? I called and I said there's a song I said yeah and that was it and then after that I don't think Ansel got in the credit as right on the record. And you know, I know you wrote that song because that was there from the first note before it was played on the piano. It was a minute, so that was like the second record I played on. And then after that, Ansel myself started making some other instrumentals. And essentially, yeah, he would call me and things like that. And then after. Leaving our in Vidisburg, we went to play with Tom and McCook on the Supersonic, like for around maybe a year or something like that. Then I left Tommy and came to play with um, the Volcanoes, and we had this gig in the country. 
uh, six months and then the hotel closed and I went into receivership so we came back to town so Ranch and I you know we always love earth wind and fire so we sat down and came up with him because I was very skinny and yeah, that guy was very stout and Ranch was like medium so I said skin flesh and bone so I was a bone you know <laughs> so <laughs> I was say the wicked name so you know we started we went back to Dicky Wong and they were like we like to start a bar and told him the name and he bought some equipment from Miami to start verse you know and you know we played hit for that like four nights a week and then Al Green had done this song called Aaron Baby so we we rehearsed the song to play it live and you know so Ryan, I think Ryan said or somebody you know this could be a re good regular version so we used to play the song live it was easy for us to just transform it and go and cut it we didn't have to rehearse it. You get um from fine, you get rock and roll station like for kill. You know it was like mostly Led Zeppelin. Evening time you now you used to have like Treasure I used to put out song like I think every Thursday evening. So you make sure you're gonna get your Christian all stealing, stealing, stealing and our something, you know, new brand, so dance couldn't miss. I used to have a brother who used to sing. Oh, and I used to just listen to them, lo listen to them fend the guitars and all them things, the acoustic. But you know, they were really interested in that yet. Until a little man named Family Man come on. And the rest of that band named Hippie Boys. I'm just kind of love when I play the little thing, you know. Get to understand after a while, say it was really a bass guitar. It's some wicked, wicked, wicked. I say, yeah, I'm just say, I want you to teach me for play that. I'm saying, just start learning, so probably one day. Going back the night, next morning, and get involved with the acoustic guitar now. I start ping, ping, ping. Couldn't really play nothing, but everything kind of sound nice. Nice, but not really so nice. Nice because you play it. Not nice, kind. Not now nah makes sense, really. <coughs> try and try and try and try. So till you have a song with Carl Darkins come out. Let me tell you truthfully, that was like one of the easiest bass lines for play. You just follow it, so. You know, the fingers them work, that's so how you play that every day. Every night and day. So till. Family man come down and say, well, uh, you want to teach you to play? Ready. Mm. Time it was, um, how long you had done with Bonnie Lee? And that was the first thing I really showed me. And you know, every evening, like, he would come and use one of the acoustic guitar and play with him. And after showing me the bass line, I'm a follow it. We, like, for, we just do that for hours. Play one song for like hours. And he said, boy, you play steady, you know. Yeah, I'll be a wicked bass player. I'm say, well, let me try. And you know, start playing with uh, upsetters after that. So hippie boys need a bass player now. So the, the, the guy who own hippie boys take a book leaf. First, him asked me if he showed me like the scale, the name of the fret. It's, that was the word he used. If I'd play in his band, I say, yeah, you know, because. I would play if I tune have like 20 card changes or anything. You play it one time and I see what you do, I would play it after. So the eyesight was working and the ears was just getting kind of tuned. So I'm showing me it like one evening, write it out and say I must know it by the next morning and I knew it then. So I was on my way to knowing A, B, C, D, E, F, G. Right after that now, rehearsal for band time, rehearse, rehearse and get kind of good for band, you know. And family man, it upset us. When family man leave, like, the country you now for tour with, like, pop, that's the time now I start really coming in, playing bass. And start following, like, behind family man, footstep everywhere family man go, when I'm not about, you know, because everybody would say, this little bass player play like family man. So I start to do with uh, Bonnie Lee, aggravators, and play, 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 play. 
sometimes you think you're playing a fool of yourself. You know, but you just go and play and, you know, to work out sometimes. You know, that was like good uh, exercise, good, like learning in school. Yeah, in school, not starting from the bottom, but like the top, yeah. you know. Um, a whole heap of thing kind of miss out of that story, but you know, that's yeah, yeah, yeah. It's a live edit. You're getting a live edit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then, oh, uh, I mean, that, that was the time you started your own label, yeah, um, during the time we had playing with, um, and I mean, I want to come back in when we start up again with it because you started taxi then, yeah, around that same time. Mm. So, I want to kind of link that in and so I might mm. take it to the next. Stage what we're talking about. Mm. Yeah, yeah, ready, ready. So, yeah, yeah. Talk, talk talk about um, that starting your own label. Yeah, where, where do I come to that? Mm. Yeah, we start, you know, some holy pal little 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 tune and you know nice tune. Derek Morgan, John Holt, Colonel Campbell, till um, there was this you tell them called Shooter like that because every day I'm just Shooter. Please, I just do one tune with me now. So come out of the studio, man, you can't sing. You know, like, once him knows, so well, we're going to do the studio, they there before and I play the piano. Johnny Clark. You know? And we do start the some song with him, and the more called, kind of a good voice and everything, you know. And um, at the same time, playing with aggravators, doing a lot of recording them time. Then. You know, we used to still like playing a club band at night, especially like weekend. Friday, Saturday, and Sunday was. Uh, yeah, I don't remember the name of it. I think it was Hippie Boy still. With the name changed after a while to use professional. And um, we had a contract to play at a club on Reddell's Road, which was beside Tit for Tat Club, where Sly used to play. And this club was Evil People. So while we were playing there, Tauta. Bernard Harvey, who now played in a circle. He was a singer in the band that I was in. So he said, let's go over tit for tat and check out Sly. So I said, all right, and we'll go over there. This little man sit down on the drum away, man. God, I just had to beat it like us. I said, yeah, you know. Next session. So next session, Bonnie Lee Carl and Carleen. I said, no, I'm like, you used to check me like Bonnie Lee, we used to hook up day and night, you know. I said, hear me now. I said, a drummer last night named Sly. Any session, Sly. I said, all right, anything I said, I'll go for Sly. And from that day there, you know, we we'll just continuous. Then now, you know, come down one day like we were playing with an ass mouth. No, I was in town. And a session was supposed to happen at Channel One and asked me to tell me. And when I go there, it was Sly Ranchy. You know, everybody, one of the, revolu the original revolutionaries was playing. And asked me to start going away. Hey, we had made a better drum and who, my bass had the best place behind If you run out them boys out of the studio, I would say, no, I see, you can't deal with it. So, you know, musician and musician. Let them live. Look how much session we do a day. Cause tell we play a session like trouble, you know. And we say just love the youth. Them, them, you know, them eat a food too. And I'm going bad. And I think that was the last time I really, really feel close to him. Cause the way him talk turned me off. And that was it for for that part right there. Then Peter Tosh, and Asmout was supposed to play again with Peter Tosh man. And we said no, go for Sly. You know, we're bringing Sly and that's everything, Sly and Robbie from then. You know, it's a session and everything. If a man call me for a session and we say, what a drummer? And I'm saying, we say, get Sly. You know, and then Sly start doing the same thing. You know, with Revolution, I used to play like piano and, and guitar sometime until bass permanent. You know, we just like, if Sly come up with a line and him can play it, he said, play the, the bass Sly. You know, just so we used to just go around easy. You know, probably that's why make revolutionaries is so wicked too. You know, kind of like the unity and the love was there. During the time with Bonnie Lee, when Johnny Clark did hot, 
you have a hip tune song or love bad 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 and a John Holt John Holt have some song to love them just the same um hip tunes um no matter baby how far away do that with Johnny Clark um John Holt um take my hand I'm a stranger but I love you and that um Give me a love from Slim Smith. Do this three song with Jana Clara. And uh, don't watch those beauty dress. That the way next Jan Holt. And uh, the first one I put out was No Matter Baby. And that Grand Road. Second one was Take My Hand. And that Grand Road. The rest, Bonnie Lee. Borrow it. And I'll never hear it. <laughs> Well, Lily, bar the tape for the rest of the song, then. So, that was it for that. Okay, that's yeah, it's a nice first part there. Yeah. <coughs> um, we're going to do something in the other studio with a live thing as well. Yeah. Yeah. It's our work, man. <laughs> yeah. That's Y'all work tonight. Y'all yeah, work tonight, don't it? But I ain't working last night. What? <laughs> Oh, you're sorry. outside, I'm clean up, man. Oh, oh, oh. <laughs> you know, when I saw you last night, you were chilling. Oh, yes, I was just chilling. Yeah, after a hard night's work, after sir. After a hard night's work. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Yeah. I guess I'm going to quick 10 grand, man. Mm -hmm. Yeah, man. I'm going to play some work. I'm going to run out like, um, more rapid. I think now we'll go back to you, Sly, and we'll start talking about the, set, the setting up of the, of the taxi. Okay. As a, because what you... What I want to... Dan, can I smoke for your set? Really eh? Yeah, man, like that. Okay. <laughs> not just musicians, session musicians, but you're really the producers. Right. Okay. Like, mm -hmm. And not just mm -hmm. playing one in one of the mic. Yeah, man. Right. Getting the whole, conceptualizing yeah. the whole production and all yeah. that. That transition is what oh, yeah. the taxi sort of showcases oh. the production. Yeah. I don't really want to get into a lot of talk about individual records, except we'll, we'll maybe later pick out, say, three. Okay. But we can talk about that tie yeah. in somewhere along the line. We're talking about murder, she wrote in there, kind of thing. Yeah. Are you ready? Yeah. Roll in. Right. Yeah, so um, let's talk now about um, the setting up of Taxi. Right, the first song that came out in Taxi. Um, I think it was a song called I'm Just a Girl. And then the second one was an instrumental called Blood and Muddy. But then it was Ranchy and myself was like producer. The first time we tried to set it up and I produced it. And, and then there was a, another third song came out with I'm Falling in Love. I think it's a Lick and Tony and then Right, one second, stop. You see when you do it, you just touch the mic. I think you just have to get One minute. Sorry, everyone settle. Okay, and uh, the second song was Bloody Muddy and Instrumental, and the third one was uh, Lick Antonio and Imperial, it's called I'm Falling in Love with You. And then at the time, Philadelphia Records were very strong, and we were listening to what they were putting out. And um, with early on as a drummer, um, I think with Washington, and Bungos, and Vince Montana and strings. So. The, the, the sound of Taxi really came from a little studio we had in Waterhouse, a guy by the name of Newton. I, called, I think he called himself Bolivar. And he had a sound system and he, he would play at night and it used to sound crisp with all his thumbs. So we tried to incorporate his thumb thumb fill into reggae. So we took the sound to Channel One with the wah wah, wah, wah where it all started around there. And then after Channel One, he read faded and Jojo did not decide we took the same song. Oh didn't use the Wawa, but he started using some of the EQ and thing and put it into taxi. And we started I put out a couple of records at Ranchi. We didn't have any big seller and stuff like that. So you know when Robbie was talking we started share the same idea and he told me about his labor. So I got some free time from Jojo because we used to get a lot of free time. That's how we started. We didn't have any money so Jojo would give us like a whole week in the studio and we just make his records and then make our records. So the first Robbie we, we did a session, didn't produce any, so Robbie said, okay the next day we're gonna take Gregory 
McGregor came, and McGregor did six songs for us. Didn't ask for any money. We check a couple of artists. Nobody did want to sing for us because we're not well-known producers like Joe Gibbs or Coxman. Or Slayer and Robert. You know? <laughs> <laughs> so McGregor came in, and McGregor sang six tunes the Thursday. And he came at the morning at 10 o'clock and voiced all six on the... I said, all right, so including that six were soon forward. So we had Nick soon forward and put those. And that was like the first number one. And we had plans that we didn't want to give anybody the record. And But the rest of the nation, probably, in the revolution, we were looking at short-term thing and we were looking at long-term stuff. So it ended up that Robin yeah. said, OK, we'll go along with it because nobody wants to reinvest their share of the money. Everybody put it in their pocket. But Robin must say, we'll take out the money and put it back into the studio. So, this is where, it, you know, that's almost like Robbie is a part of Taxi, which should be seven person, really, but everybody has the, had the label on the side and they didn't have to copy anything, but Robbie had copied his label with Taxi, so it's okay. And from there we went on and on and on and on, and on making records, doing tours, and helping out um, Dickie Wong by Tit for Tat Club, and till I was doing something for Michael Rose's brother. His, his brother and I were good friends. His brother was called Joe, and he died in a crash. So, the morning Michael came to check me. I said, that Joe died. And Michael started as a DJ, you know, first. He was a DJ. And then he started singing in this band called I think, Current of Fear or something like that. It was a local band. And we used to took him up to his aunt on Sundays, Joe and myself. So, he came and checked me that Joe died in a car crash. So. And he didn't know what to do, so I said, okay, come and check me and let me see what I can do. So he, he came and I was in the stand and he was singing like Dennis Rod. I think he had caught, I guess he's coming to dinner for nine already. I said, no, no, you can't sing like Dennis Brown. You need to find a style of your own. So I gave him a also Feliciano tape, everything on fire tape, and a Teddy Prenegrass tape. I said, go and listen, all these three people, at, the, at that time, Teddy Prenegrass and everything on fire were really cooking, and I gave him the Celeste Piano. Plus on the tape because they had this you know, you know, sound and you know, also they came back after like two weeks or three weeks and said, Okay, listen to this song now and they start saying abortion, abortion and say wicked. Then I say, Got to have caution and say, Yeah, abortion. So, you know, call Robbie and we set up the, the session. I think it was a Friday and it was free time again. So we had to do the Jojo session first and our session. But Jojo session got started late the day and never finished until six o'clock the evening. But the musician and the revolution were playing Jojo session was supposed to play on the first session that is gonna incorporate seven people. And nobody wanted to play, so I got mad and I said, Well, you know, if you were getting paid everybody would stay. So we did those six songs so fast that everybody wanted us to leave and they would say, Okay. Because they had left Robbie and myself with us with bass and drum and play and Michael was already like from 10 o'clock in the morning waiting and we never start cutting until 6 o'clock and we cut it. And we have all these songs on tape, these guests come together, Shine Eye Girl, Abortion, General Penetrance on tape for 9 months, we couldn't afford to cut a stamp off. So what we do, we give you Roy and a dub plate, all four songs. It was the only song that has these four songs. So nobody had it. So people used to just go to your dance because at two o'clock he's gonna play this four black row every time it plays out. And this is where black row broke big because nobody else had it, you know. And then we released General Penitentiary as a single and it was the biggest guess was coming to the and we had we overdubbed some syndrome in it <laughs> to make it sound different from the from the original one that you are at. Um, that was like the beginning of it was a taxi song and then it started developing everybody started saying well taxi as a sound, taxi as a sound. But we used to put like a lot of hour because like we used to work on one song for all day. Like other people were doing like six, seven songs a day, but Robert and myself would stay there with Ernest, the engineer, our soldier, our Maxi, and see so that everything is right. A lot of drum was on one track. But we make sure that because China went out to eat, he called APAC, so they could read Ernie, you know, Ernest know how to use it to bring the snare and bring the kick drum up, you know. So we say they all didn't get it right. Until. So it gave them the master tape you now and kind of assisting that time. China went and just got their six inch tracks through then. We were going with a kick drum with a tip on it, solid in on the snare, really up loud. And 
and Christian can't believe it and they played around six times so Alex said okay we're going to use this sound that's on tape for the Grey Sound song because we didn't know what they're going to play for Grey Sound at the time and so the Black Hero sound is really the Grey Sound sound that's where the Grey Sound sound was born and what else happened after that no. Compass points, <laughs> <laughs> um, <coughs> Robin. I mean, because before the Black Rivera days, I mean, we have you playing in the Black Disciples band, yeah. Spear, and I mean, that's another and um, yet another band that's always seemed to me to be yeah. worth talking about more. I mean, that's uh, Horsemouth again was in mm. there. Um, that. That must have been the last time you worked with him. No, no, we used to, we used to do some work still, you know. But you know, as I say, you know, it was like an edited version I was given. You know. Long, long, like long after things come up where me and him never really flex proper, you know. With no hard feelings still, you know, but just the way him think. You know. And he's a good drummer and everything. You know, but um, Burning Spear you now, Jack Ruby was a man who bring Burning Spear to us. And, we did an album for them, uh, Marcus Garvey, uh, Asmo, Tyrone Downey, Bobby Ellis, and player, Tom McCook, and player, and Dirty Harry. I don't remember. Guitar, I think, was China. Uh, and that was a Burning Spear band, Black Disciple. And we'll go on with, you know, Black Disciple, we'll go on for a while. But at that, at that time, anybody who played for Joe Gibbs, you turn. Joe Gibbs and the professional, mm -hmm. you know, if you play for Bonnie Lee, aggravators, anybody you play for, you, you turn all star or something, you know. Sly tell you a story, but he never tell you all of it. For um, when we're on tour with Peter Tosh the first time, we get like minimum wage, real minimum wage. And we spend half my money. Yeah, you know, you, you go and you're happy, you're foreign, and everything used to look pretty, you buy it, you know. Money done, and it's like, you know, I got a little change leave. So when I'm doing, I think I buy four tape. Buy six. <laughs> six tape, and that's where we start from. When we come here, we do, Michael was um, Artie Bella. And I would do, um, I think we do our next Michael Rose, though. Yeah, <laughs> all right. And after, you know, as you said, well, we we talk to the rest of musicians first and say, you know, do what if we play it for people, we could do it for ourselves. And everybody say, yeah, you know, first time money come in, everybody share it up. So all right, we get some more time and do a thing again. Say all right. When we go on, I ask Gregor Isaac to come and do the songs for us. And Gregor come. Like, musicians them never really want to play. I tell you the truth, must start like cry. You know, kind of, it's kind of unbelievable when you hear someone who's supposed to be a friend, I'm saying. But in the morning, I depend on this, I'm gone. You know, I slide, I say, Robbie, is all right, that's cool. We make it happen. You know, we're going on, I think the first, the first session we do, um, we had two days. And the only musician who come and stay with us that day was Winston Wright. Why did come? Why did come to? Mm -hmm. Right? And with the session that day. The next day now, they come and say, where the session will happen? And we say, here, but they didn't know it was the same session running for the next day. So Gregory was there now with the sixth show, you know, including so far and everything else. And even then, they still never want to really, like, be a part. Because one of two, two other members of them had old songs that was hit, hitting. We never have no money for put out any song, so we have Beam Kill Him, or the other one was. Yeah, 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 yeah. There were two, two, two other musicians that had songs were hit, and them they were really, 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 really want me a part of us, you know. And like one Christmas, we do an album for Serge Gainsbourg. And Jamaican ever saying, you know, broke like dog. <laughs> you know, that. Yes, like, I remember, we never have no money at all, not even one cent could I buy a sweetie. And Serge wanted us to do this tour. But the only way we went to the store with Serge, the original member of the musician, original musician, have to be there. Well, that was a nightmare. Mm. 
to get everybody to come back. Cause like coming like home with me and Sly never have nothing. You know, it was like close to Christmas and as I say, the same broke like dog. Broke than dog. <laughs> you know, see? And then after that we make a decision we said, Why anything we're going to do after this? You know? Since we see like only like the tour, right? Like think the same way. Musically, I try to look out for friends and we try to look out for other people around us and nobody do that for you. So I could look out for yourself. You know, so we start doing that more and it work better. You know? That means if we do anything and we use somebody, we use them and say, well, yeah, you know, but you know most of the base apart for slam rabbit. So once slam rabbit is there, you know business wells come. You know? Uh, we don't fail to work nowhere. We don't fail to work no time. And we're always there. Might be a little late sometime, but trust me, we'll come in. <laughs> yeah. Some great stuff usable there. Oh, yeah. oh good. Um, there's, what's that? Like our, our when we say the one drop, yeah, like the tune, um, Mr. Know It All, those kind of things. Yeah. Um, and each other, you're not killing, you know, you're, st you're still, what, what is it that you like about each other? Something like that, because that, that's not many people have that. <laughs> <laughs> you know, everybody asks the same question, mm -hmm. but I tell you something like respect, you know, yeah, well, one of the great wickedest things we can have, where we really keep together and, you know, Next thing is coming like we can't really grow up. You know, see, we always feel like a little bit me, a little kid. You know? yeah, a little kid for you, foreigners. You know? Like Jamaica, so like a little picnic. If I didn't put the drum pattern right, but, uh, I like the rubber lines are unpredictable. You never know what it's gonna be, but then it's gonna be wicked. When the next bass player, you wonder if it's gonna be the line. So it's like, I know you work it out of bass player, but they always. I want to tell you, when you go in a session to play another bass, but they try to play like how they think Robbie would play it. I sometimes listen to it, so like, okay, it's just all right, you know? So it's like, you like, you like looking at the left and your right hand, you just can you know, and it's respect, I know that, you know, you're always, you know, it's always have to be there, and you feel comfortable, and that's feeling comfortable. So the foundation is like musical mutual respect. Yeah, man. Yeah. Not only musical respect in general, yeah, you know. In general, yeah. Yeah. Kind so that like was the first thing that you know, because I remember you were saying about what attracted you was you heard like and wanted to go and check Sly in the yeah, club. Man. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. <coughs> and, and then personality proper, you know. I see you have the dread on the ball like that day. Eh? I know we have fire, you know. <laughs> <laughs> and the two way like. We think different in a some look away, but you know, it's like always cool. And we, we used to be aggressive on them things, then I said, buy the school, and we just ease it. So no, not at all, tell you the truth. Like if we didn't something and go down, you know, we don't mm. blame each other, yeah, we just yeah. blame 50%. So yeah. yeah. And we always go back and say, we try and see if we can. Come on, say, we don't say, why are you beating us? So you must, mm. yeah, I said, no, we beat together, because we're doing it together. So we never said, why? Being wrong, we are blaming you. We we'll try it again, man. We we'll try and get it right. You'll never mm. give up until we get it right. The truth, yeah. Yeah. Well, I mean, I've got. I mean, I'm happy with that. Yeah. <coughs> we'll try some. Uh, bass and drums. It's foundation of reggae. Thing, How important is a bass and drum to reggae music? Who went talk first? I <laughs> can't say about that. Yeah, more about bass, man. All, all time. Already. Talk to Steve later. Yeah. Uh, you say how important is bass and drum or drum and bass is to reggae music or to music. How important is a foundation with steel and concrete is to a house? Hold tight. Go ahead. I personally don't say the bass coming like a destroyer. 
Because it's that make the money himself for your gun in the dance. Personally, personally. I can get the whole thing out of the top. <laughs> you see the punching and out of stuff. It was really happening. It really happened because what happened. We're doing this show and I'm just a girl. The first taxi show and the jump got wiped out. After the intro, roll, the jump. Ernest mistake, punch the red button and just catch it back before the next row, right? So when it started, it was playing without these, the drum playing. So I said to him, he said, boy, you have to play back. I said, no. I said, you will listen to some Motown record that's going to start like with the i and then the bass come in. I was going to say, leave it like that. And we mix it to them. So all right, do it. And then what happened now, we were there full around and we noticed that when we played a dub version without any vocals, people go mad. I would say, you know what, mix the song the vocal on a dub section with bass and drum and punch the bass and point it in and realize that when the bass come in it come like a destroyer so and that rule bass and drums I don't know about the drum talk to him about the drum or not? No, me tell you about the drum I tell you about the drum you tell you about the drum yeah <laughs> what I rather yeah. uh, Yeah, you see like course like your yeah, idea about the uh, bass business, right? I tell you something about the drummer. Not just any drummer. The octopus. <laughs> we us like play a drum with a little you know like Muhammad Ali and um George Foreman with that fight then. George Foreman, poof! Puff, Muhammad Ali, and get him a knife. Well, slide with the liquor to get. But I don't know, I can't even figure out how he play drum now, really. But slide make drum sound like. I think probably at the way of slide play, make them invent drum machine. Hannes. Because only drum machine can do so much things like what Imola normally do on stage. Because even with Black or Peter Tosh, slide do some things with drum. And I turn on and say, do that again, you know? So that used to make a change, change on thing. I think we'll forget for telling you now. When we the, and by Peter Tosh tour, you know, there's a really dub really start get seasoning to like out of Jamaica on stage, live, international. And Octopus Man used to tickle them. And then the evil part now leave up to me, the bass. <sighs> And that now, you still have like the first tour you have only musicians used to really follow us around. Jazz musicians, because they thought that I was playing a fretless bass and thought that Sly wasn't really one person. Sly was one and Dunbar was the next one. <laughs> but you know, so they, they used to come to try and prove it every night, you know? Yeah, man. So, so we changed, they changed the name to Drum Bar and Bass Spear. I tell him, man, the drum, Adam um, put 12 African drummer together with a talking, 12 talking drum, six repeater, man, find counters and the rest of man them, I say play everything. One day I'm going to figure out how to do it. But the greatest drummer yeah, Robert, ever Robert, in the world. Huh? We're going to start playing dub on tour. It's the first time dub going outside of Jamaica because Peter used to cross us and said, boy, you got channel one in there, you put a joke yeah. in, right? But the people love it because what happened, Peter never really have an act together. So me and Robbie have to create the act with the music. And then mm -hmm. we play the song, like, like Get Up, Son Up, we play for like seven minutes. But the end part of it, we get in this percussion and bass and drums. And the people would get up and scream and go crazy. Mm -hmm. And I like him realize that it was like overshot and he was standing there playing guitar. And I remember one time playing in London and you know, when we always come to London, people always want to sit down because in 1976, we went there with Diamonds, with Virgin at the show, and first London was going to witness double like that. It always said it was strict, it couldn't happen real. And we did it, and so when we all the time we come back to play in London, people always want to sit down. And Peter said, we'll go up and play you now. We have to curse a bottle with double. And I said, alright, so, by the time we leave the stage for one minute, I mean, Robert just opened up like for us on a bar, and the whole place stirred up and we have to just mm. <laughs> yeah. And then after that, no, we really took it overboard. No, it's when we leave Peter Touch and start playing Black Hole. So we had a yeah. chance to play, but we were really playing in the studio then that was Black Hole stuff and we were producing it. 
So we get a chance to exercise life because we couldn't find any nation to go on tour block or to play with the stuff. So we told Chris that we would stop the production in Sudo for a while and go on the road with them. And this is where Doug came international. I have a next question. You called Chris name a couple of times and we talked about 60 people now. Yeah. And everybody mentioned Chris name. Can you tell us what he's like as a person and how important he is to reggae music? Well, I tell you, well, for me, I love it. <coughs> well, you know, for people give bad names still. Everybody oh. get bad names. You have to call him names when we talk. Everybody give Chris bad name, right? Everybody get bad name. Me get bad name, Robbie get bad name. We know Daniels get bad name, too, right? <laughs> Steve get bad name. But I think a lot of people should really give him credit. You know, and when it's a thing in Jamaica, a lot of people don't understand the music business. So sometimes people call another person thief because. They might don't get them royalty statement because they get money before and never realize they get money as a part of it. So, but as a Gina, I, I would really read Chris as a, like the white bird guard. Right. The bird guard was black. But his, his sense of picking an artist because we've been signed to Ireland as artists from 1981. And if we were signed to another label, no, Robbie and myself would be off. And he would say, let's keep them there because I know what is in, in them. And I think he said to me one day, why he signed us? Because uh, you know those white ballet shoes that they're dancing, but I use I play drums in there. Capizio. Capizio. I was wearing one, and he couldn't say how oh, Jamaica knew of Capizio. I didn't say I can't believe it. So I said that's the way he figured out where he wanted to go, and I said I think it can work with us, and the, the, the friendship start from there. Yeah. I mean, it's just a mutual agreement without any contract. I'm go to do the work and take it back to him, and we know if he said it that, it's gonna be that. But I think overall. A nice person. Uh, mostly, it's, um, Chris is more like we adopted father. You know? We are his adopted son, and you know, with anything, any problem, anything, anytime, anywhere, we can call Chris and Marley is like give you advice on them thing. And musically, you know, business, personal, anything, Marley is there for you. So I don't really have nothing bad to say about Chris. And tell the truth, when I hear people say anything bad about him, it was like when I was, uh, what you call it, Reagan. Mm -hmm. I really like, murder them. But you know, you have to let bygones be bygones and make people talk or the man talk. How them say, word is when I'm doing his unkind. And a lot of them just talk, talk, talk. And them see him, oh, boss, what happened? You know? And them deal with them good. But you can't please everybody. But Chris is the bestest. He's one of the bestest for reggae music. Uh, if him stick out with Bob, him stick out with we, him stick out with Black Uro, Jimmy Cliff, mm -hmm. and a lot of people, him never have to do it. And you know, know, especially I, even now, but him still. At the time, he was on an international record company, it was mm -hmm. doing reggae, but everybody was in R&B and rock and roll. Mm -hmm. and, you know, every record company signed filter off and having a reggae act. So, you know, you have to give him my mm -hmm. credit, because him credit was quit. Every time same going quick, that's when mm. we come back into it, come back in it and it gets stronger and stronger. So, and you have to face it too again. If if you come with some money and you say you take up a man when no body no know, outside a problem like a year, and you say, hmm, believe in a year now, to this, you know, and you do it and you bill him, bill him, bill him, bill him, you know. Just say for example, they never live nowhere. They never do, they never have nothing, they never have no food feed. All of a sudden they have food feed, they live somewhere, they have pretty care, they have enough girls. Of all two look a shilling nine pocket when they shake it here, ting ling ling, we never used to have because all used to be in other pocket. You know see. And you build him and you build him and you build him and you know, take a little more than him because you spend more on him for promote him, for get him up where him there. So you have to take a little bit more. You know, see, you have to remember all of them money there. It's like advance, you advance them. That if one day, if something happens for him, it happens for you. If it don't happen, you lose. Him don't lose nothing. Right? But all of a sudden, my man get big now. Him just start calling you thief. You know, thief for what? Where thief from you? You know, see, that man probably see, you might have a talent, a hidden talent, where nobody never did see. Whether it can be a shoe salesman, or you make shoes, or you, use a, you repair a roof, but you do it so good, and nobody never see it, because you're just a regular, to uh, go on in the area. And one little man come out and say, yeah, I'm pick you up. Be thankful, and I'm be grateful. Because if not, you're still there, I do the same, fix the same little shoes, repair shoes, instead of making shoes. 
And I see it. So be thankful and you know, no call a man the thief. Cause you probably make him get turn out and they want to help somebody else. Where you not going to where him just help. You know, so leave him alone. Alright, I want you to go back in your memory now. Because I want to hear some <coughs> stories about different sessions that you work. You do enough sessions. You must have some funny stu studio session stories. Alright? Just just fire as you want to fire. I want to select some stories now. The, no good, the good no. times, the bad times, the funny times. That's good. Alright, yeah, go in your memory. Well, most of the session was always good. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I'd rather make it good. If it's not good enough, make it good because we're going to make... It's what we tell ourselves all the time that we're going to make it right now. So mm -hmm. we're going with one intention. If the rhythm is, if the music is not good, or the song that the person singing, we tell the producer why the song is song, mm. can't record it. So, you know, try and try and find the right song. So this one sounds better. So, I think one of the sections I've enjoyed was, was like, it was festival time, right? And we had cut, because Robin myself used to play most of the rhythm for Jacob Miller, right? So we had cut um, Jacob Miller festival song. What name again, by? You remember? Uh, no, Far Whatever. No, Far Whatever, back yeah. yeah. No, no. 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 Uh, I don't remember the festival so much. Yeah, yeah. Da, 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 no, not the one. Not the one, yeah. Yeah. And then we cut the song on. We cut it by Joe Gibbs Studio. So at the same time, Freddie Mackey was doing one for Channel One. So we did a session the Thursday morning. So we leave there now at 2 o'clock, going down to Channel One to do Jojo. And so Jojo said, oh, oh, Jacob and Moses. I said, it's so wicked. I'm saying, hmm. You know, you have to make our own wicked ass. I'm scratching it and say, well, you know, but by and all, just the way Jojo said that the, the festival song of Freddie Mackey did was, I need a big deal to do and tell them, man. There's a drum roll and the mm. inch and the roll coming out of the song. That, I know we play that with the two versions in the day. One with the drum playing and the, the cross stick, and one with playing the open stick. I said it was so good and, you know, we never circle with it and said they got no way to the world. I said, why? <laughs> I don't think it's going to be Channel 1. Because Channel 1 had the sound. You know, had the sound. And I said, Channel 1 won it. And, yeah, that was one of them. I was trying to say someone's good too. It's great. Yeah. Hey, I remember both of them songs now. Come dance this year, first of all, yeah. with Freddie Mackay, and look all night till daylight. Yeah. 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 Robbie. Okay. Well, you can do that one again, but nice. It's, it's we, we, nice we, 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 hold on, hold tight, hold tight. You have a story from your Robbie? Yeah, we can't hear. Yeah. Session that we used to love. We used to love for hate and hate for love. <laughs> Peter Tosh. <laughs> Peter Tosh is a bad way. After we do, like legalize it, and then we do um, equal rights. After that, Peter Tosh used to record them. The way, the way Peter Tosh record them used to make was like miracle. Uh, Peter would have just come in at the show and friends and brother say, Well, I have a new song here now. We say, Make here now. Make here what? I'll me have a two minor and a ninth. You know? If <laughs> uh, just play two cards and say, I hate this, you know? We have to make a song out of it. Or you might start and him say, Boy, I have a verse and a bridge or a chorus and then you say, well, no can't stay and finish it. We go home and drink my porridge. Any time of day or night, you know. I mean, I sly used to have to just stay and finish it. Come here like a really sly and rub it, me and Peter Tosh. Tell you right from after Equal Rights. Because we used to tell him how to move from stage, when for play guitar, when for talk. When we say tour, Peter used to run to West Milan. We used to have this youth named Barry. We used to say, as we say tour, we say, go feed my West Milan. You know, see, and Barry used to find him and bring him back to town and carry him to the airport and him cuss all the way, go anywhere far in, boy, you know, go on a tour, you know. When him reach him cuss, past stage him cuss, and him come back, him still cuss. And him, <laughs> when we are going to Australia again, Papa, and we have to book the shoulder time for him and say, well, look, we could go in now. And do the same thing again. We have two nights and a major, you know, you know. And look, he used to play like, GC and D and we used to say, no, we could try to switch on them cars. Eh. So, him start come up with some cars that used to be unusual, which would be the ninth and the mid age and augmented seven. Mm. And the verse and the chorus. Then, boy, I'm going to drink my porridge, you know. So, <laughs> so that was a Peter touch one there. Sly, have any more for me? Hold tight. Tell me a bad one. Yeah. Was something you remember that was terrible. It didn't work. Well, Where we live now? All right, tell me a good one. The next. Give my grace, John. 
Yeah. 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 I had a ballet from a stone after the job. What? One big stone? But the singer just go in and sing a song. I man saw a stone <laughs> just a come for much down the road. <laughs> and the song hit, you know? <laughs> yeah, man. You used to get more fun and them things. You know? Never really... I'm a matter of fact, them day session and them still like now. Now the musician them are more of an amassed against them one another and boy, me big and me bad than you, me can't play better than you. Well, them think that joke, nobody can play better than nobody. Because you never know what me think and me can never tell you what you think. And uh, by the way, who gave the inspiration for play anyway? You know, for you can say, well, boy, that means say, yeah, say you can't play better than one man, the man who, who help you. you know? Me can't play better than no musician. Me know me good in a my way. Sly never said that yet. Me That's can't say him good in a theme way. Can you play how you feel? Yeah. You know, and if you get the same song to ten different set of musicians, you get ten yeah. different feel. You know? So nobody better than none in a music. Tell me, technology. How did the technology affect <coughs> Sly and Rafa? When the digital business comes in you now, yeah. and some people fight yeah, it. And so, did, one minute, one minute. Band, did you just got it? What's the fact? All right, I want everybody hold it down. Call the corner. Yeah, I want that. I want you to say it again. <coughs> say something like when when the digital come in. When the digital thing come, it never really just come. Cause we come with it. Cause we born digital, <laughs> so it never trouble us. Because it's the greatest thing with drum machine, right? Like, drum machine scale a lot of drum. Cause I had the electronic drum called Simba. I had the, the Simmons also. Right, and yeah. I knew that it was gonna change sooner or later. But when the drum machine came in, all the drummers them, boy, them can't do it. What I do, I try to learn what the drum machine was all about. And I said, well, I know the drum machine can't do things I can do, and I can't do things that the drum machine can do. So I said, me and the drum machine, I forgot to war. So I just get myself a couple of drum machines, and I said, well, I gain control, and I gave me the drum machine control me. I control my destiny at the drum machine. But if I keep going and play, I go play live if I feel like the drum machine, I use it, but. All those, the drummer like Osmo, Santa, Paul Douglas, Mikey Boo still play, but they made cold feet to the drum machine. But it doesn't matter. The drum machine or the drum machine. Because when you go and do French, I don't want to use a drum machine. But if I choose to use a drum machine, they don't say anything. Because I'm sorry, let's see, you know. But they buddy, they always set up a kit. They don't really affect us. Because I still buy digital, you know. You know, with them have synthesized a bass. Well, one time he said, I'll play synthesizer of bass. Sly nearly killed me. That's the only time we nearly fight. <laughs> <laughs> so I said, a synthesizer of bass try for sound like how oh, my bass sounds. So, you know, nobody will trouble it. I just leave it alone and play the same normal four string bass. Yeah. Um, Sly, we talked about, you know, no musician is better than, than another, but who have been some of the musicians, both here in Jamaica and outside, who have impressed? Who've impressed One minute, can we hold it? You probably need to change. Yeah, change yeah. Mm. Great, kind of real nice. That is Spana Bana, Spana Inspiration. Spana get inspired by a girl from the country who came to look for my girlfriend in Kingstown some years ago and you know 